welcome to Pure House Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we are in episode 38. Yeah. We're gotta, almost to 40. Got to get my, my drink to get going here. What do you got in there? That's not coffee, Mike. It's not coffee. It's it's a monster. A monster, really? Yeah. Yeah. Our conversation, like you need to stay awake or something. What's going on here? Yeah, I gotta keep gotta keep uh gotta keep the energy levels up. I know. At least artificially. <laughs> it's all right. I know what that's all about with my diet do. So people well, have caught on. But you drink the diet do like in place of water. Like I don't I don't know if I've ever seen you drink water except for like the one time on Instagram when you were making a deal about drinking water. I'm sure I'm sure I drink water. So, you know what my dream is? Is to have a fountain machine in my house with Diet Mountain Dew. Yeah. How that's, awesome that's would that be? That's an addiction, man. Imagine the work I would get done. Imagine the listing. Imagine. Like, uh, I, I would be at like 2,000 in my store right now, and Amazon shipments would be going out see, the multiple problem, times a day. The problem, though, is like caffeine is efficient. But you, you also build up tolerance quickly to it. So I think I think it loses its you'd have to cycle. You'd have to like cycle off the Mountain Dew. That is true. And that is cycle true. Back on, so. so that's what this episode is gonna be about. Caffeine. Is that what is that what we're talking that's about? That's what we're talking All about. All right. Caffeine. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. That would be terrible. We're, we're not the health people. I mean, Mike's a health guy. I'm not a health guy. I will never speak on health. I don't think I have a platform. So would you agree with that? <laughs> put me on the spot I, I, just, like that. I was waiting for him to, you know, say something mean. All right. Hey, I've never said anything. Mean. I know no, he actually never has. So aggressive Mike comes out only in the episodes every once in a while. Mm. So <laughs> look at that. You got them. Mm. All right. Hey, so, so episode 38, we wanted to talk about which model works best for you. Okay. And when I say which model works best for you is, you know, what is it that's your strengths, right? Because that's what you want to play to when you're reselling. Because what I find a lot is that we get caught up in this, you know, we all know better than everybody else and everybody else knows better than we do, right? Do you Have, do you, have you felt some of that since you started reselling? Yeah, I, you know, um, it's it's definitely tough. I, I think what I've felt is when I'm on Instagram and we've talked about this before, you see what other people are doing and there's the the temptation to compare yourself to them and think like, okay, well they're doing a certain, certain style of selling. They're using this platform or they sell, they sell used games. I don't sell used games. I better, I guess I better jump on that. I'm missing money. You know? So there's that, that fear of, I must not be doing it right because I'm not doing it the exact same way they are. Yeah. It's just, and I will say it's a bigger struggle now with social media. You know, when I was in my own world, I, I would watch YouTube but I didn't feel as much pressure on YouTube because you know, you can turn it on you turn it off. Some days you go without it. But when you're on social media, especially like the way we are, right, we're on it every day, right? We see things, right? And sometimes some of the stuff is encouraging and some of the stuff is discouraging. And and then we kind of get caught in this like, oh, am I doing things right? Mm. So I thought we should touch on three things. You know, number one, we want to talk about, you know, how do we sell on platforms, right? What has worked for Mike? What's worked for me? What, and maybe as we're having this discussion, you can think about what is best for you. Also, we want to talk about items that we're selling. Right. Cause sometimes we get caught in like, oh, we're just not selling the right items. That's why our business isn't working. Then last of all, what's our goals? We kind of talk about some of these in the last <laughs> 37 episodes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we never had a really a good episode about, you know, using that model that works for you. That's right. So, right off the, so early on, right, Mike, when we talk about, you know, how you sell on platforms. So, what I'm talking about is I'm not talking about what platform, not, you know, we're not saying, hey, Mercari or Poshmark or Amazon, but, just in all, you know, auction, best offer, listing high. We talked about fast nickel, slow dime. What are some of the things you think that you initially started that weren't that great and then you kind of changed a little bit? Um, well, I think like a lot of people who first start, especially on eBay, um, there's the temptation to go straight to auction, right? Like to not even, I didn't even realize, like I, I'd always saw the buy it now, but I just assumed that it was like, you know, auction or buy it now price. That's kind of how I thought it always worked. Is that because you know? eBay's always been known like as an auction? Site? Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's how you know it, it had just been in my mind. It was the place where you do auction. So, um, the first things that I sold on eBay um, before we kind of really started this like reselling thing, uh, and I was just trying testing it out on my own uh, was all auction. And there were definitely items that that went well below what they could have gone for, right? Because it just so happened that that people weren't bidding at that time on that item. And, uh, but I still felt good because it's like, okay, I'm selling items. So it gave me that initial push. Um, but since then, I've definitely moved to 
just buy it now listing um, as opposed to auction. And and to be honest, I'm not 100% sure who auction would be better for, but I'm sure it is for certain markets. Do you have any idea of like when auction would be preferable? Well, I will say the first thing is auctions are nice because you get that cha-ching multiple times, mm. right? Or at least that whatever that sound, I can't make it. Can you make that sound? I'd, you know what I'm talking about. You know, eBay used to just make cha-ching sounds whenever you got something, mm. which was good, but at the same time, a confusing. it was a little confusing because you're like excited like you had a sale, but all it was was like a best offer, right? It wasn't guaranteed. But, you know, it, I remember in the early days, I did the same thing. I'll never forget the Star Wars video game that it was nice. I mean, it was like five in the morning. I kept hearing cha-ching, 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 kept going up. And, uh, you know, I, I sold it. I probably could have sold it for more had I done buy it now. But there are some people that it does work for. You know, there's two. I think there's two scenarios, right? One is if you have something that is very valuable or rare, right? And I'm not saying that it's rare in the sense that it's like old. It could be maybe a new pair of Nikes that just dropped that only so many people were able to get their hands on, mm. right? And so you're going to have a bidding war. So it's worth it. Or if you have an item that you really don't know, but you know what it sold for before and you kind of, I don't know, through your research, you're comfortable knowing that it's going to go high. It, sometimes it's it's worth it. There's also other people, and this is what I want to talk about is, and later on is, you know, let's say you need that cash right away. Auction might work. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Kind of the the fast nickel versus the, the slow dime approach. Yeah. Or, you know, like let's say I need to make sales consistently every Sunday. Right, you put seven day auction the following Sunday, you're gonna have those sales. I mean, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried any auctions that just didn't go well? Oh, uh, certainly. My, you know, the funny thing is, there's been a few items that I've accidentally put up as auction instead of. Um, How'd you do that? Well, sometimes when you list, you know, on on the phone, and this is when I was pretty new, so I haven't done it since, but uh, it oftentimes defaults to auction. Right, really? like that is the default. It doesn't okay. default to to buy it now, you know, until sold. So when it defaults there, if I'm not careful to check things, or if I click it but I didn't click it right, or or something like that, um, then it's on a seven day auction, and it might be a couple of weeks before I catch it, and it's like this item did not sell, and I'm like, why do I get a notification that this <laughs> item didn't sell? Oh, it's on there as an auction, right? And I have to go in and well, at least it sell for like ninety nine cents or something. Yeah, but that's the thing though is I I it was put in as an auction at like. The price that should have been like the buy it now price. So okay. it's probably part of the reason why it didn't sell. But that's good. I mean, that's the other reason. It's like some people do auctions and they only auction at the price that they're comfortable with. Right. So that's something to think about. If you're new, you know, and you want to do an auction, you got to be careful because sometimes you get might get led astray and people are like, oh, I only do auctions and you'll start at 99 cents. And I know some resellers that, you know, early on, that's all they did. And then for whatever reason, you know, they got enlightened and go, I, I should be doing buy it now. Mm. Like, yeah, I was making sales, but look at how much money I was leaving on the table by doing auctions, right? Because I find auctions, what works for me is I <laughs> use auctions when I'm buying stuff from other people to resell. Right. Yeah, you're, you're taking advantage of the fact you're doing eBay arbitrage. No, that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. So that happens sometimes. Uh, but, you know, there are people that do very well with auctions. I will say for my, the model for me is that, I'm a long tail kind of guy and I have a pipeline built. So auctions aren't necessarily something I do. I'll do them every once in a while. You know, like what, if I'm trying to get rid of, event, yeah, excuse me, if I'm trying to get rid of inventory. I'm trying to keep close to the mic here. Mike told me earlier, if I'm not close, he's going to like punch me in the arm every time I move away. Yep. <laughs> he doesn't even deny it. He just goes with it. Yeah. I think I, I, I don't know if I said the arm, it might've been like the face area, but I was definitely going to give, give you a nice, punch if you uh, move away. It could be. I was kind of worried about last episode, last episode, but you know, if you haven't caught the last episode, we had a moment with things that are interesting. That was two episodes ago. No, no. It was, it was last episode too. Oh, yeah. okay. I forgot about that. All right. Hey, um, so if you're trying to move inventory, auction is definitely a great, or you're just trying to get eBay like activity going. I think auctions are a good, great way. So, so tell me a little bit, okay, are you a fan, like you've kind of, you ventured, this is like a interview mic time, but you ventured, you know, you do use stuff, right, from garage sales and thrift stores, but you also mm -hmm. ventured into retail arbitrage. Did you find that's working out for you? Um, I mean, it, it does a little bit. I need to, 
I still have not like jump jumped onto the the Amazon FBA uh, train and haven't had a ton of opportunity to to do more retail arbitrage, but I've done a few things. I've done I've done some toys that were on clearance or some other items that were on clearance. And I know clearance isn't the the always the best way, right? But like I'm talking about eBay though. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so okay. doing eBay. Um, so I've sold quite a few things that I've purchased uh, at, at Target or Walmart uh, from clearance sections, or uh, I've been to a couple like TJ Maxx or something like that and, and have picked up a few things. I'd like to spend more time there. I think the hardest part there is I have to get my mind wrapped around the smaller uh, return on investment, but the ease of acquiring the inventory, right? It's kind of, I think, the trade-off you've got there. So you go to a garage sale, you might spend all day and only pick up three items, but you're turning a, a $10 purchase into a $100 profit, whereas you go to you go to a store and you're picking up items and you might be able to go clear off, you know, 30 of them at one, at one go, going to several different stores, uh, but you might only be making $10 per item, right? So it's just trying to keep my mind... Like, okay, it's worth the time, but I have to sell more. So the inventory space and, you know, it's just, it's a different model. I don't know if I have, not sure where I stand on that yet. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, for me, like I said, for me, best offer, right? By now, best offer is the way to go. But, you know, if you're trying to do retail arbitrage, there are some people that just do buy now. Mm. Right? Like there is no best offer. Like I know the price is where I want it and they do well, but I also struggle with retail arbitrage. Like I like it, but you got to figure things out. Like you got to really know your market. And am I, am I willing to invest that much time? So I'll give you an example. How much do you know about Nike shoes? Nothing. Okay. (laughs) I'm in the same boat, right? So there are some awesome people out there, right? If you're not following them on Instagram, like hustler hacks and Renzi now, and, and some of the groups, like they all day are buying Nike shoes and they can go in a Nike store and they can go like, this is, the LeBron, whatever, this is the Kyrie, this is the Jordan. I go in, um, I, I don't know. Like, unless I, like, scan it or look it up on my phone, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend tons of time in there. But I do do shop Nike. And what I shop for in Nike is those shoes that I know people are going to want. So sometimes I might look for shoes that look retro or sometimes a different color pattern or you know, something that I knew in the 90s that I liked and they're doing some repops. And mm. so I might pick those up. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So I, for me, it's, you know, a lot of us get caught up in this shoe game because the shoe game, you know, you see people that sell stuff like the Supreme sneakers that come out and they want to, you know, they sell them like in two hours. Have you seen some of that? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, right. Students do that. Did you yep, know that? I do. Yeah. Right. It's 8 a.m. when it drops every Thursday. Like I've, I remember when I was in education, I would catch students on the Supreme site trying to get the drops, right? But for me, like and that anxiety, I just can't handle it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure, especially because I've had a few students do that and they get the drop, they buy the item, and then afterwards they're like, oh, this was not that great of a purchase. Because not everything really? is like Supreme. After fact? Yeah, because like some sometimes it's like, oh, this isn't, this isn't like... I mean, because everything the Supreme is going to be, you know, scarcity is the, kind of the way they do it. They only release so many of them, but some things are more sought, sought after than others and, and they'll just like purchase right away. And it's like, oh man, this was just the shirt. You know, I was hoping like it doesn't make as much as the sweater makes and, you know, I w- shouldn't have bought it. And I've, ha- I've heard those conversations. So yeah, you have to really know a lot about the items that you're purchasing. So, and that's one of the things you got to be self-aware. Like you got to understand, like, is it something you really want to do, right? So Mike, would you prefer learning about that or doing more vintage stereo? You have to think about this one. I thought this was a slam dunk for you. I mean, definitely vintage. Gosh, I don't know. So the the hard part is, I mean, you say vintage stereo, like I don't know, like stereo equipment or like turntables or speakers. I'm starting to not like those. Really? Why is that? Take up too much space. They're too heavy to ship. Okay. I like, I'm liking smaller things. Okay. 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 So again, but you're learning, right? This is right. Part, right yep. The model that works for you. Right. So if you listen to our podcast, I don't know, three months ago, Mike, you love that stuff. I did. Yeah. And I'm moving more and more towards like clothing items. They take up less space, easy to, to ship. list, easy to ship. Right. Okay. No, and and I, that works for me now, you know? Okay. That's good. So that's one of the things like for me, do I love buying? I mean, I've sold some Supreme items in the past, but I got to tell you, unless you have a bot, like it's really hard to get on there. Mm. 
right? And then, you know, most of those sales happen right away before you even get the merchandise, right? So you got to be comfortable with it. And so again, there are some people that are awesome at doing those kind of things and, and more power to you, like keep doing it. Right. I know for me, I just, I noticed the longer, especially now that I'm full-time reseller, like I rather get the item I know I'm going to get. Does that make sense? Right. Right. Do you feel pressure when you go into a thrift store? Yeah, you do? I don't feel pressure. I just feel, I guess, a, a mix of hopefulness and, and I'm, I'm always a little bit of a cynic, like, man, I never find good stuff. Oh, look, I found something good. Right. So there's like, and, and we talked before, like, I don't like leaving without having something. So sometimes I'll spend longer than I should in inside of a thrift store because I haven't found anything yet. Okay. Okay. I get that. I, you know, I used to have those days where like I would rush my kids through dinner or I'd <laughs> or I'm like, I got to get to this thrift store. And that's kind of now I get it. Now that I'm full time, I have more time. Right. So time is right. Like you've been saying the last few weeks, it's been tough. Yeah. Right. Finding that time. But so you went to getting those pallets of boxes, right? I've I've done a couple of those. Yeah. A couple of those. Right. And are you finding that something you're comfortable with or do you kind of wish that you if you had a preference, would you go with the box or would you go with like thrifting and garage sales? I don't know if it needs to be an either or. OK. Right. I think I think I think we're still um, my wife and I are still kind of testing the waters and figuring out trying to figure out what what is our our space in this market, right? Like what's the things that work and, and it might not just be a single thing. It might be garage sales are huge for us. Thrift stores are huge for us. And the clothes boxes are kind of a supplemental thing that kind of help keep things moving. Right. So I think the two, the two are, are meshing together. So I don't know if I could put like an either or, but that's part of what we're figuring out is like, what, what does our model look like? Okay. I get that. And that's, I, you know, I've been reselling for now I'm going to year six soon and as, as you know, not a full time, but somebody that's serious about it. I mean, I've been reselling for years, but as far as really reselling, it's going to be six years. And I'm still trying to figure that. I think being a full time reseller made me really figure it out. And, you know, I see people on IG that they'll buy liquidation or they'll buy truckloads and I've thought about it, but then I just like getting out there. Like there's a part of me that enjoys being able to, you know, go to a thrift store and getting that find or going to a garage sale. But at the same time, like if you're trying to run a business, you know, maybe the boxes and the pallets and the trucks are for you. But here's the thing. There's a part of me that goes, if I had to do that, like work in a warehouse, I just wouldn't resell anymore. Mm. I mean, are you comfortable having a warehouse like of goods? I mean, you've talked about empire before, right? Right. Um, like, let's say you could bring in the revenue you wanted and you could go full time. Yeah, I think I really enjoy garage selling and thrift storing, thrift storing, thrift sailing, thrifting. No, I'm joking. Somebody, 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 somebody mentioned so, so garage selling. I like that thrifting. I love, I love those two things. Um, I'd be okay if I could keep that as a hobby for fun. And it not be necessarily work. And if work became pallets and this and that other warehouse, and if if that became a way of of making a full-time income, would it be as like enjoyable as like the hobby part of going to to thrift stores and garage sales? Probably not. But then that keeps my hobby, my hobby, and it kind of keeps it fun. Because I've noticed that too. I've noticed that, that sometimes you do something because you love it. And if you do it too much and it, and it becomes too, too much of like a pressure, it can, you can actually start to resent it or not love it as much. And, and, you know, I'd hate, I'd I'd hate that to be going to garage sales and going to thrift stores and finding those big fines. Um, but if, if I could, if you could make a living doing what you love and it doesn't become burdensome, then, then, then yeah, I would, I'd love to do that too. And that's part of it. You got to find the model that you enjoy. You know, as I'm now, you know, been a full-time reseller for about six months. No, actually going on eight months here. It's February. One of the things I noticed right away is that the parts of it, I did not enjoy as much as before. Right. Cause it was nice when I had a full income from my nine to five. All right. And then you get that $80 sale. Well, that $80 sale means a lot more now, right. When you're part-time, 
because now you're like, oh, I could put it towards this. I could put it towards that. But when you're full time, that $80 sale, you think about the numbers that you need to make for that week to be able to pay the bills and move forward. Right. So it means a little bit different. So, again, we keep saying, like, you got to figure out what works for you. You know, there's this. I think there's a huge discussion that needs to be had in the reselling community, and maybe I'm off about, you know, why why should you drop your nine to five? Right? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see some of that out there? Mike's very very much in pondering mode. This yeah, I, I don't know. What do you what do you mean by that? So, so there's this there's this constant like, hey, I need to break my nine to five. You got to get out of your nine to five if. If you want to work any kind of job, like you're not an entrepreneur, you know, it, it's very much as this, uh, it's us against the man kind of deal. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think there's people who are like that. And I, I, I don't know though. I think, I think that's one of those things where it, you've got to be careful, um, because where I'm at, I'm, I'm, I feel like you can have either or, right. Or both. You can, you can have the nine to five and, and be just fine. You can have the 100% full time resale and be fine. You can have a mixture of the two and be fine. Like you, it depends on what you want, right? And, and I think there's nothing wrong with being a entrepreneur that also works like a typical job. Because to say that's not hustle because you're answerable, like you answer to somebody else. I think, I think that's that that kind of takes away from the fact that you know, then you hustle on top of that, right? So it's like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hustle on top of hustle on top of the nine to five. Um, I don't know if I mentioned or not. Um, I played that um, millennial for oh, Monopoly, Monopoly for millennials. millennials. Yeah. Bolo. No, yeah. I'm yeah. So, so I, I played that the other night with my wife and we were cracking up. It was actually, I felt like pretty accurate with a lot of like the community chess cards and stuff. Okay. And, and one of the, I think it was a community chess card or something. It said something to the effect of you just got a third job and started a video blog no more time for for hobbies or friends or whatever. Pay three hundred dollars or actually, I think that was one because you started a new job, you got some extra money. But it was like, yeah, that's that's totally like our generation. So I think I think too, there's just the mindset of like, you kind of need to work more in order to 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 make it. But but I think to to say that part of that work can't be a nine to five job. I don't know if that's fair to say. No, I I agree. I mean that that's why I wanted to have this conversation because. I think part of it is finding the model that works for you is, you know, you get on Instagram or you know, you'll get on Twitter and you hear a lot of this, you know, discussion of, you know, work for yourself, do what you want to do. And a lot of the times is defined as, hey, if that means, you know, that the only way to do it is to quit your nine to five, then do it. Right. But some people love their nine to five. Right. I loved my nine to five. I just moved forward for multiple reasons. Right. Right. One of them is I love the time I get to spend with my family that I didn't get to have before. Right. That was one of the reasons. But, you know, let's say down the road, I'm able to. And I talked about this in my IG uh, and our, my our IG account uh, about the idea that, you know, I may start teaching a couple classes here and there like once a week just because I love doing that. Like it's not work for me. Right. So you got to think about that. Like, don't get caught in the whole, hey, I need to break the nine to five for breaking the nine to five. Right. There's a lot to it, too. Right. You got to think about health insurance. You got to think about is it really what I do? I hate it or is it because, you know, I, I'm feeling the pressure, you know, that, hey, if I'm continuing to do this, well, I'm not that big of a reseller anymore or, or so on. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it's. I think there are people who are stuck in jobs that they don't like. Um, and I think there are people who are hustling really hard to make ends meet and they're miserable too. Right. So I think it's, I think there's almost this like, um, paradise view of what it means to be an entrepreneur, to, to work for yourself, not like you're, you're your own boss, but you're also your own employee. Like we've mentioned in the past, which mm -hmm. means you've got to cover the bills. You've got to make sure that, 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 you know, everything works out. So there's a lot of pressure and stress there. And so I think, I think for some people, um, combining the two together is the way to make it work. It's right to have, to have stability and you can have stability and also have a little bit of risk. It's kind of like investments, right? Like a lot of times when people do, uh, like a, a stock portfolio of some kind, they, they've got quite a bit of their, their investments are a little riskier, but higher reward. And some of them are a little more stable and they're kind of not going to be move much up or down. And I think, I think there's nothing wrong with having that in, in your day-to-day -day life too, to have something that's like, okay, here's my stable 
and I can use that to help seed, you know, as a seed and, and to, to get more capital going into this thing that's a little bit risky and, and you can enjoy doing both of those things. And if you're looking at your nine to five job that way is like, this is hustle too. Like it, it might not be fun, but there's parts of working for yourself. That's not fun. Well, it's interesting you say that because, you know, I've, I've seen a quote like, Hey, I'd rather work 80 hours to be my own boss. So I don't have to work 40 hours for someone else. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's true for everyone. You know, I would say I'm kind of half and half, right? If I love what I'm doing, I don't mind working for somebody else, right? But if I do love what I'm doing, right, and I love the freedom, maybe I'm willing to work those 80 hours so I can have that freedom. Yeah, that actually reminds me of a story I uh, I, I, I was talking to this guy, and we were playing that game. I don't know if you remember. It was like the Would You Rather. Kind of. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like a silly game people play, like while they're waiting in lines and stuff. Okay. Um, and and they're usually pretty funny. But somebody asked an interesting one, so it was like they were using a phone app to get the would you rather's, and and the the would you rather was would you rather have a job that you it's kind of along those lines we talked about would okay. you rather have a job that you made a, a bunch of money, a ton of money, but you were always busy, or a job where you made just enough money to get by, but you had a lot of free time, right? And so they had an interesting conversation. Everybody had had things to say. And one of the guys that was in the group said something that I thought was interesting. And he was like, I, I would definitely take the job with the free time. Um, and he said, because I've spent my entire life making a lot of money and I'll never have that time back. And if I could do it again, I wish I would have had more, like, more time. Interesting. And so I think that, that's that's something to remember is is it's hard to put one type of lifestyle on a pedestal because what it does is it makes it seem like any other lifestyle is 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 wrong and I think people are just so different. There are going to be people who who love to work and work and work and make a bunch of money um, and and do really well. And I think the people who actually have the ability to put in that kind of energy and effort and work. Um, are kind of few and far between, right? Like I think those are the people who are becoming successful entrepreneurs or CEOs of companies, the people who are okay with putting in 80 hours a week. Um, and so what that does though, is if we put that lifestyle on a pedestal, it basically says that's, that is what everybody should be reaching for. But I think there's something to be said too. Like you've mentioned that reselling is allowed you have more time with your family. Correct. Now, if you had the opportunity to triple the amount of income you were making on reselling, but you had to give up all that free time with your family. Now that's a big decision you have to make, right? It's like, well, at what point is my, my time that I have leisure time or time with my family, um, outweigh the money. And at what point, you know, so everybody has to make that decision for themselves. No, I agree. And, and part of it has to do with, you know, what kind of, uh, not platform, but what kind of model do you want to sell? Right. So, you know, there's there's kind of one of those things where you got to think about, and we talked we've talked about this. You know, let's say you decide to get a warehouse. Well, you're going to be away from your family, right? Right. And there's some people that do Amazon right from their living room, mm. right? They'll they'll send out like tons of boxes and they'll make, you know, six figures from their living room, right? And so that's something you have to think about. Like, don't get a warehouse if you really enjoy time with your family, because yes, you might be able to. I guess over time, build enough income where you can just go to the warehouse. But then again, I kind of feel like you're in a nine to five again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're just right? you're just the boss of the nine to five. Which you know, I've I've been I've been manager at, at companies before, and that's not always so great either. Yeah, we still have to answer to somebody though. Yeah, well, everybody always has to answer to somebody. That is true. No, no, I get it. I get it. I guess, but you touch on something very important, like. Just because you end that nine to five or you have no boss, you're still answering to someone, right? right? No matter what, right? Unless there's no taxes. But then even then, you're still answering to bills and and your own family and, and, and customers. And, and so there's, there's, yeah. there's still kind of a, a give and take. So I got a question for you. So we're talking about, you know, using the model that works for you. If, if you had your ideal, this is again a mic interview. If you had your ideal item to consistently find and sell, what would it, what would it be? You're talking about clothing. So, right. Is, is that your ideal right now? Or is that just because it's the easier? Yeah. Route? Clothing, clothing is easy. If I could walk into, into a thrift store and be guaranteed to find high end clothing items at a decent price, that would be, that would be gold. Right. Um, because there's times where I go into a thrift store and I find 
an electronic device or a new sealed product of some kind, and I'm going to make $40 off of it or $50 off it, and I feel pretty good. And then there's times where I pick up a pair of jeans or or a sweater, and I make 40 or $50 off of it, and I'm like, well, one was a lot easier than the other, right? So, so right. it's not as fun finding the sweater, but as far as shipping, storing. So, yeah, I think I think if I... If I had to pick just for ease of my and sanity, I think I would say clothing, but, but it's not as fun as the, I don't feel as finding like the really unique, rare one-off trinkets and stuff. Yeah. It's strange that you say that. Cause you know, I think about, we talked about electronics, right? How you were all in love with vintage electronics. And I think you still like vintage. I do. Yeah. But it's one of those things where it requires more work. It and, does. And you know, I have a laser disc player right now. That I bought, actually, I think I had an IG story back in July. And I actually let it sit in storage probably until three weeks ago. And then, even then, I, I found the laser disc to play on it, and I still haven't tested it. Right? But here's the funny thing. So, two years ago, my friend and I, uh, we went garage sale in a neighborhood, and they had this sign that said free. And they had a laser disc player in a box. Like the box that came with it and the remote, it was all complete. Wow. Uh, they had, a, I think it was like a surfboard or something, and they had a violin. And so we split it up amongst ourselves, and I took the laser disc. Well, I was really pumped about listing that laser disc because I got it for free. I'm like, wow, I wonder what I could get for this. And so within a week, I sold it for like $250 profit. Right? This laser disc, I paid for it, and there wasn't that much as excitement because I, I guess there was no like, haha, we actually got this. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So you you really have to find those things you enjoy, and you know because I I don't know like when you mentioned Banana Republic, remember you had told me and you yeah. still kind of sell that like to me that's just blah right like there there's no you know like I love Hawaiian shirts that are unique because sometimes they're like really cool like the sports ones but that's just me like mm. I'll never wear a Hawaiian shirt but I love selling them right. Right. But if, if you're asking me to go and, hey, you know, this will turn a quick profit, like I, I'm just that's just not my game. Right. So I couldn't do what you do. Like I couldn't order the boxes because, you know, chances that you find something interesting, unique are pretty, pretty rare in there. Yeah. And I mean, I guess as far as clothing items go, like it's hard to tell always what's interesting and unique. Like some stuff's going to be like really rare, but but a shirt's a shirt's a shirt and some brands and tags are going to be worth more than others. But how often do you find like an old gaming system, right? Like, yeah, no, I, so especially that's, now it's really rare. Yeah. I would say in a year it's become really rare or maybe cause we haven't been able to go to garage sales for a long time. <laughs> Could be it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been raining like all the time or freezing and people just aren't doing it in San yeah, Diego. It's finally starting to pick back up. Now it's interesting you say clothes because I don't know. I've, I've been reselling for five years and it seems like things ebb and flow. So when I first jumped in, it was all about clothing, like on YouTube and everything you saw. Now it's very much about hard goods, right? But I like hard goods, but you're right. Like the storage component, like even though I have a unit that I put stuff in, it takes a space. Yep. Right. And then having a packet, you know, it takes time. And then hoping that it arrives in working condition takes time. Yep. Right. So I, I get what you're saying. And for me, the model that works for me is clothing because it's it's really quick, right? And I know the market is saturated, but you just got to find those things that aren't as saturated. Right. All right. You look up for completed solds, but you don't only look up completed solds. You look at how many have sold in comparison to how many are trying to be sold. And then you figure out, okay, maybe this is something worth picking up, All right? Um, so, you know, like high B stuff, that's really, we already talked about that. So. Retail arbitrage, you kind of enjoy that a little bit. I enjoy it to a certain point, but it depends what it is. I find that a lot of the retail arbitrage I buy are things I would have bought at a thrift store. Right. Right? So I'll go to the Disney store, and if there's like a Disney Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> I'll pick it up. Right? But if it's just a Mickey Mouse shirt, it's not worth my time. Yeah. Right? So tell me a little bit, you know, have your goal – you talked about this in previous podcasts, like how your goal has changed, right? So when we first started – Right. You were like, hey, I want to buy money for that drone. I want yep. to get money for that drone. Want to get a drone. Yep. And then it turned into, oh man, like I could pay for like vacation to, oh man, this is like supplemental income to, 
who knows how this is going to affect my life, right? Like we're, we're constantly scaling and growing and, uh, and yeah, we've talked in the past, like I want to build an empire, not necessarily like in the sense that I want to, to, you know, be super, super wealthy or some kind of, you know, powerful person. Like that's not my goal. I want to have a legacy to leave to my son, right? Like I want to, to have something that when he gets older, he doesn't have to worry about if he wants to go to college, what it's going to cost him, or if he wants to get into some trade or he wants to try a few, like he knows that, that, and I know that I can take care of him, right. That I can help him with that. And then that I can, as I get older, he's not going to have to pay for me, um, you know, to go into a home or anything like I I've got myself covered and I've got you covered, right? Like I want to be able to buy him, uh, a car. I want to be able to help him buy his first house. I want to, you know, all those things. So I want to have, have a legacy to pass down to, to my son. Okay. And you know, there's different models to do that. Right. So I'll give you an example. So when I first started reselling, I was very, it was all eBay. It was all eBay. And it, it's interesting now that I'm a full-time reseller, I actually was producing the same amount of numbers on eBay that I am producing now in 30 months as a part-time reseller. Right. And you're like, why is that happening? Well, it, it's happening. Amazon. I mean, Amazon caused that to happen. Right. I focus so much on Amazon, but now, you know, I've talked about in the last few podcasts, I am trying to change my model, right? 70% eBay, 30% Amazon, instead of what it's been 70% Amazon, 30% eBay. And the reason being is I learned that I'm not a fan of the volume game. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm more of a fan of the ROI game. Right. Where eBay lends to that. And so, you know, this Q4 and I've talked about it before, like I had major expectations and I did OK. But I still wonder, like, could I have done the same with eBay? Not saying hmm. the same amount of money. I don't think that would have happened. Right. But, you know, somebody had asked me the other day, I think it was my tax preparer. I, I, we mentioned this in the past pod in the previous podcast. You know, when I met, you know, they saw how I did the year before and they saw how I did now. And, you know, we had a discussion about Amazon and um, I think I mentioned this two podcasts ago where uh, she had uh, mentioned, you know, I, I, I gave the number about how much it cost me to do Amazon. And it was a pretty substantial number. And she goes, was it was it worth it? Mm. And I go, yeah, it was worth it. But definitely you have to buy in bulk. You have to buy a lot. Right. And so that that's where like right now you have to figure out if you want to jump into Amazon, you know, which model is going to work for you is going to be one where you're going to go out and you're going to make sure that you make three times the amount on an item. Or are you OK with 30 percent? I thought I was OK with 30 percent this Q4. I'm not OK with it. I just felt like it was a lot of work and not in much in returns where on eBay, you know, now that I'm, I'm ramping up my eBay, you know, I'm getting those nice sales and I'm like. I find a lot more satisfaction in that. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, you gotta, you gotta kind of figure out, and I know you're not as into keeping like numbers for everything. And, and Amazon is nice because it gives you breakdowns on a lot of that stuff, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of, of factors to contribute that contribute into how much you're making and how much you're, you're spending. Cause, cause you, you have wear on tear on vehicle, right? Like mm -hmm. that's part of, you know, that gets taken care of to an extent with taxes, but on top of that, it's like time. So I feel like eBay, you can probably, I think one of the reasons people experience a slowdown after a certain point is you can scale to an extent, but after a certain point, you're going to be limited on how many amazing finds you can get at a thrift store or a garage sale or, right? Like it might be, if you go to a thrift store every single day and you go to garage sales every weekend, and then you hit up clearance ex sections at stores, you can make a certain amount. But if you add, let's say, an extra 10 hours of that to your week, you might not necessarily find that much more at the thrift stores because there's not more inventory there. See, I don't know. I, th I I disagree on that one. I think there is. I think now going full time, I think there is opportunities a lot more. I think in the retail arbitrage world, it's a lot harder. So let me, let me explain. So before when I was doing part time, I would have scores, right? But they wouldn't be as much, right? I would have like, you know, a nice garage sale weekend and then maybe it'll be two weeks. But I find now that full time, if I'm constantly at thrift stores and constantly at garage sales, I think there's a lot more opportunity. I really do. I the the amount of scores I've had over these last six months 
was something that would have taken like, let's say three years. Right. But Amazon, I think, is the one where it doesn't change. Right. Because you can keep going to the same store and it's the same items. Right. There isn't going to be out of nowhere. Like, you know, remember that deal in Norway sweater. Like you're not going to have that item that was twelve dollars. that I'll be able to flip for four hundred or you're not going to have the item that you found for five. that you, you can flip for a hundred. That's always I think that's always out there. The key is constantly being out there. And that's part of it. Like, do you, you there's a lot of wear and tear. Mm. Right. There's a lot of time away. So if it's something you enjoy and that model works for you, then do it. There's some people that love retail arbitrage. And to them, they get the same endorphin rush when they find that hot item that's selling for a lot and they go store to store to store to store. There's other people that are like, ha, oh, this is robotic. Like, mm. I don't even want to deal with this. Does that make more, does that clear things up a little bit? Yeah, I think I think it does to an extent, but I but I still think as far as scaling goes, um, I think you're right. So if you're only going, if you're only spending three hours a week at, at thrift stores and then you up that to 20 hours a week, you're going to see substantial increases in your fines. But I think if you go from 20 hours and you stay within the same, I don't know, 20 mile radius of thrift stores and you take that 20 hours and you up to 40 hours, I don't think that means your fines are going to double. I think at a certain point, like... There's going to be, the, I mean, the, in economics called the law of diminishing returns, right? Like I think you're going to get to a certain point where adding more hours doesn't mean an increase in, 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 in the fines. You're going to have diminishing returns. So each hour you might be finding more things, but what would, what, what you were making, let's say thousand dollars every 20 hours, maybe at 40 hours, you're only making 1500, right? So that extra 20, it, it, it drops in, in return. Whereas I think the benefit to Amazon is you you potentially if you're willing to buy in huge bulk the volume, um, you can keep scaling up. Well, but that's what it requires to scale. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Where yeah. eBay, it, it's not the same model to scale. Yeah. Right? So or I think it, or Yeah. So I think it depends on what what you're using as your primary form of currency. I guess is it is it money or is it time and energy? Exactly. Right? And and for instance, like wholesaling, right? Are, are you a fan of wholesaling? Like, are, is that something you've been pondering? Um, I mean, I, I've definitely looked into it, but I don't think it's some uh, direction I'm going to head. Okay. And why is that? Uh, it doesn't want, I mean, huge risk, right? Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that's part of it is just huge risk storage, um, or, or I don't know, just, it doesn't have that life giving feeling to me that, that going to a thrift store, or a, a does it list. spark joy. Yeah. It's not as fun. Okay. But I mean, if, if I could be guaranteed, I mean, like anything, if you could tell somebody like, Hey, you're guaranteed X amount of money for doing this. Yeah, you're gonna jump on board. I just don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm willing to take that risk. No, I get it. And and that's one thing you gotta think about. Cause I've considered wholesale, right? For Amazon. And I, I still kind of think about it, but I remember when uh remember that huge score of Danner boots that I had? I don't know if I, I've talked I've talked about it in the podcast before, yeah. but you know, I had this huge like sample and it was through one of the reps. And I remember, you know, I was given the booklet and like, this is, you know, this is what wholesale charges and this is what you can sell it for. And I remember there was like a small window, like I couldn't charge any less. All right. So even though I was going to buy things at a certain price below what their retail, you know, what they wanted for retail, I couldn't do it. Right. So I was stuck within those parameters. And then the amount of money I was going to make. Wasn't a lot. I mean, we're talking about like maybe 10%, maybe 20% on a good day, 30%. And it's not just with this product. I've looked at other wholesale items. And for me, it's, you know, it's, it's different because if you go to a store or something and you buy a lot of items, well, you still have options, right? You can, you know, choose the platform, right? Cause on wholesale, you got to agree that you're not, you're only going to sell it on certain places, right? Sometimes wholesale companies only want you to do Amazon or they don't want you to do Amazon. Right. And on top of that, you can always return stuff. Right. Or you can always manipulate numbers to sell it for what you want. But when you go wholesale, you know, you're making a huge investment. And I'm not saying wholesale isn't the way to go. It's just it's not a model that I would like to do because it requires a lot of money and it requires the space and it requires, you know, you're still set with those parameters. Right. And you have to buy a lot. Right. Where I'd rather spend that capital still doing retail arbitrage or doing eBay. And again, please know that when we we're talking about this, we're not saying this is the only way the whole, the whole title of the episode is what model works best for you. 
right? So you got to figure this out. We're having this conversation because, you know, a lot of you are new and you're still trying to figure it out. Or maybe you're in a place where you're like, hey, I should be doing, you know, this in order to make money. Well, you got to be aware. Like, is this really what works for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, pros and con lists, right? And, okay. and actually figuring it out and do the research. I mean, I, I talked to you for weeks before, uh, I mean, well, months and months of, of learning about you doing reselling, but it was several weeks of me asking questions and kind of figuring things out and doing research and watching YouTube videos before I did my first, like, okay, I'm going to a garage sale. I'm going to start posting stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do reselling, right? So I learned about it. And then, and then I've decided I wanted to do books and I did a little bit of research and I bought some stuff for it and then I tried it and wasn't really into it, but I didn't go like a hundred percent into it. Right. Like it wasn't something that, that I spent a ton of money and a ton of time and put all of my eggs in this one basket. I tested it out a little bit. Okay. Before we move forward, we haven't asked you to join us on Instagram yet. So let's spend that time real quick. If you haven't a chance, find us on Instagram. We are Pierce of Podcast. On Facebook, Pierce of Podcast. On Twitter, we are Pierce of Cast. You can always give us a call, 619-738-1170. And you can email us if you want, Pierce of Podcast at gmail.com. And if you're watching this YouTube and you have some thoughts or comments, things you'd like to share, things you disagree with Mike or I, leave in the comments below. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to us on YouTube, please do and give us a thumbs up because, hey, we're continually trying to bring value. And the more people that subscribe, subscribe and more interaction, the more we can get this message out there. So, all right. So tell me about books. Cause it's funny you bring books. Cause I really loved books in the beginning and I'm kind of wanting to get back into books a little bit. So t- tell me what happened. So you got all the, all the items and then what happened? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't do ton of, um, I, I didn't jump into it like a hundred percent. I just wanted to kind of figure out if it was something I like. So I bought a scanner. I, I, purchase a a temporary subscription to a service that would, you know, let me see what the values of things were. And I think just right now, um, do I think there's, there's money to be made in it? Sure. I just don't have the time. So I went to one, I I went to several different like libraries and, and bookstores and scan, 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 scan. Oh, maybe I'll make $5 off this book. Okay. I'll buy it. Scan, 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 scan. And so yeah, I could see if I was doing this, you know, 20 hours a week, I could probably fill up boxes, send them to Amazon. And over the few months of doing that, have an incredible amount of, of just revenue constantly coming in. Um, but right now, because I'm struggling to find the time to get, you know, some VCRs listed, the book thing just is not, it's not time for that. Maybe they'll come to a place where, you know, if I was ever reselling full time, um, maybe. Okay. And Again, I enjoyed books, but I, I think I enjoyed books because it was a lot easier to access. You know, when I was doing books five years ago, there was major competition still, but it wasn't as big as it is now. And on top of that, I had access, you know, as a teacher, I had access to a lot of textbooks, right? At conventions or people would always send you send you sample textbooks and, and I'd ask for them back. I think they asked for them back now, but... <laughs> Back in those days, I could ask for two or three and, and they wouldn't care. They'd say, oh, go keep them. And then I'd, you know, I, I'd flip three of them for 300 bucks and I'm good to go. But a lot has changed. But, you know, if you're wanting to start with Amazon, books is definitely an avenue to go to. You just have to remember that there's a lot of the mundane that you deal with, right? Yeah. I mean, to me, the idea of sitting in front of a computer and typing in which books or scanning the books and then printing labels and then putting them in boxes and organizing them. If I had like two days a week where it was like free time, like if I was doing this full time and it's like, well, I've got nothing else to do. Yeah, I could probably do that. But when I've only got like Saturday as my day off and I'm already spending that garage sales, um, yeah, just the idea of doing that is like, ugh. Yeah, I know. And there's others that would say, I love it. Like I love the rush of getting to a book sale and finding all these books and, and so on. But again, it's, it's, you got to find, you know, what in the end excites you because again, if we're doing this reselling thing and it becomes monotonous and you know, we're, we're miserable, we're not happy. Ultimately, yeah, you may be making the extra money, but at what cost? Right. And I think that's why a lot of resellers go away too. (laughs) I think after a while, you know, they're tired of the hustle, they're tired of the grind, or I truly believe a lot of resellers try to do things that others are doing and they're just not, and they're not happy with it. Yep. You know, um, I think, t- I, you know, today I went to, 
uh, the Nike store, right? And, and uh, I buy stuff at the Nike store. And I've t- mentioned earlier, but there's another part is like I see all these people rushing for certain shoes, and I'm just kind of like, I don't know, like that. That's an, I like. I don't like battling. Like I like Black Friday. Yeah. Right. I like the rush. I like the competition. I like getting the hot toys, and I like flipping them. But I don't like that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, you got. I feel like you have to have that personality. Um, and if that's your personality, if that's what you like doing, then then yeah, right. Like that's and that's. I think I think one of the beautiful things that I've l- learned about just reselling in general, uh, and and it's kind of what we're talking about here, is there's really a part of it that that will probably match anybody's personality, right? I, I mean, unless unless you're just you know have no desire to to work at all, um, but. I mean, I'm lucky enough to be in a situation where I love sourcing. My wife doesn't mind listing, right? I also take the pictures, but she likes to list. Okay. And then we pack together. So we have like a routine. Um, and I, I don't know how I got that lucky, but it just worked out. Like we're always like a perfect team in almost anything awesome. we do. It, it, it's great. But I mean, if you're the kind of person that like to you, it's kind of uh, therapeutic to like sit down and like do listings or to scan books or, you know, there's, there's going to be something like for you. Therapeutic. Yeah. There is though. Like, yeah. you know, for me, it's, or if you want the rush, right. If you're into the rush, yeah. there's that part of it. Like I will tell you, you know, during Q4, there were nights I was packing boxes at 1am. I, that wasn't, I just didn't enjoy that. Now, did I do it? Cause I knew there'd be profit. Sure. And that pushed me to do it. But would I rather turn on Netflix and be listening at 1 a.m.? I'd rather do that all day long. Mm. Like, for me, it's it's weird, but it's therapeutic to list. right? Because I feel like I'm watching something and I'm enjoying it. I'm being entertained at the same time I'm listing. Right? And when I put that on an IG story, I remember one time people were like, that's terrible. Like, I would never want to do that. Right? But for me, I'm okay with that. Right? There, there was a point in time when I loved getting up at 5 in the morning going to garage sales. I don't know if I like getting up at five in the morning anymore. It's not. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is you go through seasons, right? Like you, you can kind of, and that's, I still like going to garage sales. I love it. But you know, five in the morning, it's kind of rough now. It's rough. Yeah. I, you know, it's weird, slightly off topic, but like yeah. I've, I've recently found like for me, I actually, and this is relatively new, I would say, I always listen to audio books and, and podcasts and have for years and years all the time. Like I always have something in my ear. My wife yells at me sometimes like, you, you know, like you're not even listening to me or like I can't even go to sleep. I ha- <laughs> Do you have AirPods? I don't, but I have like Bluetooth ones. Okay, so okay. I can't even go to sleep unless I'm listening to something. I have a hard time falling asleep. So even when I'm laying in bed, I've got some, I'm listening to something. And so for me now, like washing dishes is something I enjoy doing, huh. right? Like, so I could see how like listing for some people, like for me, you know, my wife will be doing something with my son, maybe taking him upstairs and giving him a bath and doing other things. And if I can just put in my headphones, listen to my audio book and I, I'll clean the kitchen, I'll clean it till it's spotless. And it's, it's kind of nice. It's therapeutic. I don't mind doing it. Cooking can't stand it. I don't like doing it. Right. So it's the same thing. I feel like with reselling, there's going to be parts you don't necessarily like, or maybe for a season you don't like. Um, but if you focus on the thing you do like, and then you do the things you don't when you have to, I think you can make it work. No, I agree. It's interesting you say that. I think about, you know, in the last podcast, I had talked about my time with So Quick, Ship Quick in LA. And we hit thrift store after thrift store. But I did the same thing back in November for Q4, but we didn't go thrift stores. We did retail arbitrage. And I will tell you, I felt really exhausted in November. Like I did it and I it was enjoyable. But I remember telling Hugo and Tiffany, like, we hung out, but we didn't really hang out. Right. It was just ultimate business. Like there's the items, there's the items, there's the items. Put them in the car. All right, let's go next door. Right. And we would hit like 20 plus stores. Right. And I talked about in the last podcast how it was a little bit, you know, it was slower. And we actually got to like hang out. Right. We went to the stores and like, hey, look what I found. Or oh, this is look at what I found here. And cool. OK, let's go grab something to eat. And then we talk shop. And it was a little different. Like the pressure wasn't there mm-hmm. where when I did what I was doing FBA in Q4, it was like. We got to pack tonight and we got to ship tonight. And that was not ship tonight, but ship the next morning. Where, you know, eBay, it, you know, you have a little bit more time. It's a little slower. Right? There's no, you know, race to the bottom on eBay. And so, again, it's one of those things you got to think about. But that does happen with eBay. Like, if you're into, like, the hype beast stuff or if you're into, like, 
the new newest thing I'm hearing now is cosmetics. You know, like those high end cosmetics that are selling really fast. Really? Yeah, that's like the thing now, right? And so, I wouldn't have known that unless I had Instagram. But to me, again, like there's a lot of pressure. Like you got to get that stuff fast, and you got to sell it fast before people lose interest and a new thing shows up, right? And so, again, you got to find what works for you. So, part of it, you know, is about reselling goals. Now, have you ever thought about? We talked about this in the previous podcast, not previous, but the one before that about signs of a reseller, right? Have you ever thought about moving to continue reselling? Yeah. Um, I mentioned, so my my in-laws have, you know, a nice piece of property. Hey, I remember you talking yeah. about this. And uh, when we first moved out into San Diego, we we lived in a in like a fifth wheel on their property. It was just like, so I could finish up schooling and it was super helpful for us. And we've kind of considered actually like we've, we've watched several of like the documentaries and been interested in the whole like tiny home living oh, thing really? for a while. Yeah. Wow, and so we've thrown around the idea of like, okay, what would it look like? Cause that if you're not from Southern California and it would, you wouldn't believe how much houses go for here. Like just rent. So like to, to buy a, a 800 square foot, like, shack in San Diego shack. would cost like what you can buy a mansion in for most other parts of the, of the country. Easy 500 K. Yeah. Half a million dollars for like a thousand square feet. Like yeah. it's ridiculous. So, um, which you got to imagine if that's how much it costs to buy, like rent is, is extreme too. So when you have to have two incomes and both people hustling on top of the two incomes in order to like have the bare minimum living style, whereas like, okay, like what if, what if we, were to move somewhere where it was cheaper, other state, or like, what if we went back to your parents' property and, and built a tiny home, right? Like, it'd be fun. We could we could downsize. We could change our lifestyle a little bit. We wouldn't have to work as hard in these other nine to five jobs. And could reselling support that? Yeah. So there's definitely been a lot of of talk about what what that could look like. Yeah, and and I bring that up because uh, you know, I've been listening to Scavenger Life for years, right? And if you haven't chance to another awesome podcast outside of ours, <laughs> but you know, they moved to rural, uh, rural, I haven't messed up that word, rural, rural Virginia. And they were in the Bay Area. And one of the reasons, you know, they went out there is because the cost of living and they've been able to do a lot through use of eBay, right. And be able to buy multiple homes, start up other businesses. And that's something, you know, you got to consider too, what model works for you. Like, what are you aiming for? Right. If, if you're trying to like, you know, whether it's Mike or somebody else trying to build an empire, right? And you're trying to do that in Southern California, well, you better make sure that it's, you know, gonna fit what you're trying to do. Right. Like for instance, myself, you know, it's funny, I get this question all the time, and I'm sure you've seen it in the DMs, like, how much do you make a month? Right. And we don't we don't discuss numbers, right? There's multiple personal reasons, but one of it is you know, we're not here uh, to say, hey, this is how awesome we are or this is how much we make. And we're not here to discourage you because w- what happens when people start throwing numbers around, they start playing this, man, I need to do this. I need right. to be at this number. Right. And I've had some DMs and I've had people throw out some outrageous numbers, go like, hey, Orlando. So, you know, you make this much, you know, I want to be that, you know, and and what do I need to do to do that? And I go, no, no, no. It's not about what I do. It's what you need to do. Yeah. 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 You can, you can make a living doing this, but what that style of living in it, what that standard of living is, is going to be very dependent on how much work you put into it. Yeah. And what you're okay with. Like for me, I'm not, you know, in San Diego, I'm not going to try to get a five bedroom home. I mean, I, there's no purpose for me doing that, but that's just not my thing. I'd rather live, you know, in, in a, in a, you know, in a decent home, Right. But be able to go on vacations with my with my kids. Right. Be able to, you know, not stress about getting season tickets to the Padres or something like that. Like, even though they're not the Giants, but mm. it's something I'd rather do than have to work, you know, my tail off and, you know, scale Amazon at a ridiculous scale and scale my eBay to an obnoxious amount where I'm working 80 hours in order to have that really nice house. I'd rather scale it. Like you said, I'm more of a fan of scaling down. 
And, you know, if I want to, if my, if my son goes, Hey dad, you know, I really would love to get this new device that helps me in my, you know, creating of videos. Like, I don't have to go like, Oh, I don't know. We put that money towards this massive mortgage. I read school. You know what, son? That's all good. I'll take care of that. Like that's, I'd rather get that ROI. And I know it's kind of weird because I always thought I wanted that massive mansion and yeah. I wanted to, you know, live large. Uh, but I don't know anymore. Yeah. The thing, wealth, wealth, um, or income, it goes, there's two sides of it. It flows two ways, right? Money comes in and then money goes out. So you have two ways that you can increase or, or change your style of living. One is for more money to come in or for less money to go out, right? True. Both of those things are going to impact your life. So simplifying sometimes allows you to keep a similar standard of living on less, bring in less, or you can bring in more. And if you don't change your standard of living, now you've got more wealth, or you can increase your standard of living with it. And you're kind of at the same place you were, but maybe with more stuff. Right. And so that's the other thing you have to figure out, you know, what, what works for you. I mean, I'm, I've been a very interested in like the minimalist ideas and, and simplifying. And I'm definitely not a minimalist. I'm not a hoarder either. Uh, I used to lean a little bit more towards that. And I've, I've, I've definitely gotten better at getting rid of things and, and not collecting things that I shouldn't collect and, uh, just having junk around. Uh, but I've, I've definitely thought of, okay, would simplifying my life allow me to work less, which would allow me to have more time with my family, which ultimately is, is my end goal, right? Like the only reason I want to make more money most of the time is so that I have more that I can do with my family. But if that's coming at the cost of my family, then, then I'm kind of defeating the purpose. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you got to think about. So, you know, I always reply, like I make enough where I, I don't live paycheck to paycheck and I'm able to enjoy time with my family. Like that, that's enough ROI for me. Right. And if that means I drive a Honda pilot for the rest of my life, I'm okay with that. Right. So, but again, if you're not okay with it and you want to get that seven series Beamer, which they're nice. Don't get or a Tesla. I hear those are good. Or a Tesla. That's awesome too. Well, then you got to think about, okay, what model is going to get me there? And then you got to be willing to say, you know what? I'm either A, going to enjoy this or it's going to be worth the hustle for me to be able to enjoy what I want to get to. Yeah. Right. Just some of the things you got to think about. So again, that goes to our idea of reselling goals, right? Are you doing this? Is this model meant to pay your bills? Is it meant to break the nine to five? Is it meant to just go on vacation? Is it meant for you to just, you know, live a different lifestyle? And you're hundred percent right. You know, you can live like a king and still be frugal. Yep. And, and, you know, I think for most people, happiness or fulfillment of some kind is the, the end goal. Most, for most people, money is just a, a way of attaining that, right? Like money allows them to, to try and buy happiness in one way or another, um, whether it's by allowing them to have time or, or freedom in certain areas. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just important for you to figure out, you know, what, what, where do you really want to be? Because it's easy to look at the people who make a ton and work a lot. And if that's you, if that's the lifestyle you want, then go for it. That's what makes you happy. But it's, I think we, all get trapped in the place of where we see other people and we want to, we want to be them because we think they've attained happiness. Right. And so we sac can actually sacrifice our happiness time with our family. If that's what you want in order to try and get more money, realizing that you're chasing somebody else's happiness, not your own. 100%. Or you could be the person that needs to keep going and pushing and you're an entrepreneur to the level that like you get your fulfillment from attaining more and, and, and being successful. And so for you, I mean, you've got to do that. I mean, if that's what you're searching for, if, if that's, if that's how you're getting your fulfillment. And so then you would have to look at people who like to just watch Netflix on the weekends and go to sporting events. And you can look at those people who are happy and don't chase that happiness. If that's not, what's going to bring you the happiness. Agreed. And I think all of this that we talked about today ties into it, right? You know, as weird as that sounds, but the model of just how you run eBay, right? If you do auctions, you do best offer, we'll play a part in that, right? Because if you're looking for a fast nickel or slow dime, if you can use platforms like StockX, you want to make that quick money right away at the Nike store and you're able to scale it faster and you're willing to be there every day, 
then that's something you got to think about, right? Or if you're willing to play the long game and go to garage sales or go to thrift stores, or you want to play the volume game, right? And you are comfortable with dropping that amount of money to make those major purchases, to make those sales, to get the lifestyle that you're looking for. So I think this all plays a part. I hope this was encouraging to all of you when you think about what model works for you. Hopefully we gave you a lot of value and things to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And if if you if you're just starting out and you don't know what model is best for you, um, my suggestion is if, if if you're not in a rush to make this your living, which you probably shouldn't be because uh, it takes time to build this up, um, test out a little bit of everything. Spend spend a few weekends going to garage sales and going to thrift stores and 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 try eBay. Spend a few weeks going to retail stores and trying that out. Spend some weeks doing research on wholesale, right? Do a little bit of everything to kind of figure out like, Hey, this is, this is what I like. Agreed. Agreed. So, Hey, hopefully we brought a lot for you to think about and, you know, love to hear the discussion down in the comments. Make sure you're always being real, be relevant and be reselling. Peace. Peace.